God's glory is revealed when he does not merely shield us from sadness but reaches into the depths of despair and turns it into perfect joy. My dear brothers and sisters, of all the miracles Jesus did, the raising of Lazarus ranks as the most astonishing to the people of his time. Traditional Jewish belief had it that the soul of a dead person somehow remains with the body for three days. After three days, the soul departs finally from the body, never to return. And that is when corruption sets in. When Martha objects to the opening of the tomb and says, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days, she is expressing the common view that this is now a hopeless situation. Is that why Jesus delayed coming to the funeral to let the situation become impossible before acting on it? G.K. Kesterton, an English philosopher, once said, Hope means hoping when things are hopeless or it is no virtue at all. Yes, it is when we find ourselves in hopeless situation, when the situation is no longer in our control, the Lord comes and performs His miracle. Because there is no glory for God in what is humanly possible. That is why Jesus in John chapter 11 verse 41 tells them why He allowed Lazarus to die so that you will see the glory of God. We see God's glory shine out when the death itself and not just disease is overcome and reversed. God's glory is revealed when He does not merely shield us from sadness but reaches into the depths of despair and turns it into perfect joy. For the early Christians, the story of the raising of Lazarus was more than a pointer to the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus rose on the third day, his body never saw corruption. For this miracle is a challenge to never give up hope even in the hopeless situation in which they found themselves as individuals, as a church or as a nation. It is never too late for God to revive and revitalize a person, a church or a nation. But first, we must learn to cooperate with God. How can we cooperate with God so as to experience God's resurrection power in our lives and in our world? Well, everyone knows the answer already, faith. But that is not the point that John makes in this story. In fact, there is no one in the story, not even Mary or Martha, who believed that Jesus would bring Lazarus back to life after four days dead. No one expected him to do it. So expectant faith is not the emphasis here, rather the emphasis in the story on how we cooperate with God is emphasized here through our obedience. To effect the miracle, Jesus issues three commands and all of them are obeyed to the letter. That is how the miracle happens. First Jesus said, roll away the stone. So they rolled away the stone. Did they understand why they should do this heavy work of rolling away the tombstone to expose a stinking corpse? It seems they didn't. But it was their faith in Jesus expressing itself not through intellectual agreement with Jesus but through practical agreement with Him through their obedience. Why didn't Jesus command the stone to roll away all by itself? without bothering people. We don't quite know. All we know is that the divine power seems always to be activated by human cooperation and stifled by non-cooperation. As C.S. Lewis said, God seems to do nothing of himself which he can possibly delegate to his creatures. That is to say, God will not do by a miracle what we can do by obedience. The second command Jesus gives is directed to the dead man, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out. We do not know the details of what had happened in the tomb. 
all we know is that Jesus' word of command is followed by immediate obedience. Lazarus gropes his way out of the dark tomb even with his hands and feet tied up in bandages and his face all wrapped up. Even a man rotting away in the tomb can still do something to help himself. The third command again is addressed to the people, unbind him and let him go. Even though Lazarus could stumble himself out of the tomb, there was no way he could unbind himself. He needs the community to do that for him. By unbinding Lazarus and setting him free from the death bands, the community is accepting Lazarus back as one of them. Many Christians and communities today, my dear brothers and sisters, have fallen victim to the death of sin. Many are already in the tomb of hopelessness and decay, in the bondage of sinful habits and attitudes. Nothing short of a miracle can bring us back to life in Christ. Jesus is ready for the miracle. He himself said, I came that they may have life and have it in fullness. So are we ready to cooperate with him for the miracle? Are we ready to roll away the stone that stands between us and the light of Christ's face? Are we ready to take the first step to come out of the place of death? Are we ready to unbind one another and let them go free? These are the various ways we can cooperate with God in the miracle of bringing us back to life and reviving us as individuals, as a church and as a nation. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, let us pray that God may give us the grace to cooperate with Him through our obedience so that we can see the divine power of Jesus working in our lives through miracles. Amen.